Hello! In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a hidden strap connector. Ever have to use this hardware and then have absolute regrets over it because it takes forever to get the plastic off? Or what if you wanted a smaller profile for your strap connector if you're making, say, a smaller bag? Um, so sometimes I do shoulder totes like the Swoon Lola and I shrink it and so I make them miniature size. These are a little overwhelming. The hardware is big, it's awesome, it's reliable, and they're easy to install. The kicker is it just has a, such a big footprint that it makes it look so, I don't know, unwieldy. Um, so that's when I like to use a smaller profile option, such as a hidden strap connector. You can see a little bit of the black thread. This is uh, being recorded after the fact. Um, so I did take people's advice. I think I'm losing the cat, um, and use uh, light fabric with dark uh, seam lines so you could see a little better. But this here is a strap connector um, that has been hidden. Um, and I've basically just attached it with a rivet on the underside and a couple of stitches. And it's really easy to do. So let's get into it. Let's quickly go over the stuff that you're going to need. You're going to need your exterior fabric, this is going to be our mock bag. It's so awesome looking. Um, I promise not to quit my day job. You'll need ruler, double-sided tape. Highly recommended if you don't have it at this point. Um, I don't know how to help you other than to give you a link in the section below. Uh, clips uh, as needed, your hardware. So D-ring, rectangular ring, whichever um, is best for you. Um, I will go over these two pieces in a moment, but these are scrap, basically scrap pieces of vinyl that match your exterior vinyl. And though I say vinyl, um, you can do this with, uh, with a woven fabric. I just really don't recommend it. Um, only because while we're going to be using a method that involves facing so that you don't have raw vinyl edges showing, um, on either side, uh, it still would be considered raw on either end with a woven unless you have heavily interfaced it. So I still just wouldn't recommend this for woven fabrics. I know that would be a top question. Um, I do recommend using an exacto knife for the portion where you need to cut the hole for uh, the strap connector. Um, and uh, yeah, you can totally use a rotary blade, but an X-Acto knife is gonna let you get a much more uh, precise slice um, and, and ensure that you don't accidentally do anything silly, like make the hole 1.25 inches too big because that would suck. All right, so that's all the stuff that we need. Uh, let's get started on what we need for the cut pieces here in the next section. So these two pieces that you see here are scrap pieces of vinyl that match the exterior vinyl on the bag. Um, so what we're doing, there's two of them. This one is the facing. It is only the same width as your hardware. And for the purposes of this video, I am using one inch hardware. So this is a one inch D ring. So I've made a one inch wide by two and a half to three inch long piece. I wouldn't go below two, two and a half in terms of, of like the length here. Um, and that's because the facing is eventually going to get flipped down and tacked down to keep the bag from uh, like the, the topmost seam basically from flipping around and making a weird bump on the top portion of the bag here um, to, to kind of, you know, gracefully gloss over that. Um, so that'll be our facing. And again, same width as your hardware um, and about two and a half to three inches long. The next piece of scrap fabric is going to be your actual strap connector. This needs to be double the width and three inches long. You can make it two and a half, but I, I just overcut because it's a scrap piece and I don't really care. And I can trim it down after the fact. Um, so yeah, so again, it's gonna be double. So this is two inches because I have one inch hardware and three inches long. We're going to prepare the strap connector first, mostly because I just have, a, I, I wanna have all these 
tiny little pieces ready to go and then I can just go and do the thing as opposed to get up and go to the machine and come back and do another thing. I like to get all the little pieces together and then slap it together like a pie, like a really tasty vinyl pie. Uh, anyway, I won't quit my day job. Um, so uh, one of the things I like to do is to take a pen, pen, pencil, what have you, and go to the back side, the wrong side of the vinyl, and mark a line halfway through. So since this is a two inch wide piece of vinyl, I'm going to draw my line at the one inch mark. And this is just so I know that that's where I'm folding my raw side edges to. So you wanna fold in the longest edges to the middle and leave this, uh, go ahead and leave this raw up at the top because that's gonna get kind of encased in the hidden hidden strap magical thing that we're going to do. Um, so in order to uh, fold this, um, that's where the tape comes into play. But something I want to emphasize here is that this, depending on the size of the bag that you're making, is going to get a, a lot, a lot of uh, heavy traffic, so to speak. Um, and if your vinyl is not really tough, like let's say you're using um, a custom printed vinyl um, and that custom printed vinyl has like this fleece looking backing to it, it really needs to be interfaced. Now this is a marine vinyl and it is pretty strong, right? So I don't really feel like I need to put Decoville on there or, or it doesn't even have to be Decoville, it can be Deco Bond, but I keep scraps around because I want to put a little bit, just the tiniest amount in the middle section here, just for, just for my sanity, um, because I am always so scared that my straps are going to rip apart. So I'm going to go ahead and iron this little piece on. And again, you know, it's vinyl and you're fine um, to, to iron this if you put like a, a cloth over it or uh, like if you have cheesecloth or a tea towel, just like lay it over it and just very gently make some moving motions. Um, Decoville bonds very quickly uh, that way. Deco bond might need witchcraft um, or some burning sage. But if you just keep doing circular motions, uh, then you're gonna be fine. And actually, why don't I just skip and uh, bring the iron up and show you that. And here's my little setup that I have for ironing. I love this. Um, so I have my vinyl, uh, my little, what will, will be our strap connector strip. Um, and I have it right side facing down and because of course you don't wanna do facing up with vinyl, the plastic will melt and it will be terrible. It smells bad anyway. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take a Teflon sheet. This is something that I use. You can get these off of Amazon um, and they're, they're really nice and they last quite a bit, but the Teflon sheet's really good um, if you have those. But of course in a pinch, you can just use um, a, another piece of cotton fabric. Um, and I just set that down on top there we go, didn't like offset it. And then I take the iron and I don't set it on my fingers. Uh, I go ahead and I just make these gentle motions here and then lift because I don't wanna apply heat for too long. Um, no more than a couple of seconds because some vinyls will just, the texture on them will go flat. Um, this is adhered perfectly fine, just enough for what we need. Um, Decavel, again, doesn't really take like a lot, um, but you may find that um, like Deco bonds will take a bit longer to adhere. If you don't want to do that, you can actually just do two layers of a woven interfacing and that's totally fine. But this, you will thank me later because this really reinforces the section where the D-ring is going to be sitting. Um, and and just makes it so much safer. I can't tell you how many times I've seen people have like ripped straps and it's just so sad because there's no fixing it. <laughs> right, so now that we've ironed it, we're gonna go back to the double-sided tape and we're going to take a bit of this tape and put it right smack over the line that you drew. 
I go all the way short edge to short edge. And I just kind of squeeze it on there with my fingers and pull that off when it works. And we're going to fold these longer raw edges to the center. And you might have to like work around the interfacing. So like the Decaville kind of doesn't want to listen to me because it's a toddler, but um, it, you still love it. And we're just going to plop that down. You can also, if you want, make it less wide, but since you're folding into the middle, no one's going to see that lump. <laughs> or at least you hope no one's going to see the lump. Ah! The beauty about this technique is you don't need to top stitch because it's going to be shoved so far into the bag front in that hidden connector hole, no one's ever going to see it. So don't bother. Um, the important thing now is to take this and kind of just finger press it in half so that you know like about where the D-ring is going to go and also just double check things. But uh, this is how I handle that. And so now we have our connector. And again, don't, don't worry about top stitching because there's no point. <laughs> ha! At this point, we have all the pieces that we need to start making the hidden connector. So what you want to do, and, and uh, in case you're wondering, um, this exterior fabric, pretend this is your bag, should be interfaced. Just for the purposes of this demonstration, I put a very small strip of Decaville on the back here. Um, I didn't want to waste it on the whole thing because, hey, it's a demo. We don't need to do that. Um, but just so you know, I'm assuming you have this bad boy interfaced when you do this. If you do not, then you risk it ripping apart on that part as well. So um, the top of the strap, the strap connector that you are trying to hide into a tiny hole, this part here, um, this is the one that's going to be facing up. If you put it down like this, you will be very disappointed because this will only work in Whoville. So we're going to set that up there and it's one inch. So this is very similar to the technique that's used to make a welt zipper pocket, except that you're not gonna go up and down on either side. It's just the one horizontal line. So I'm using a pen. You don't have to use a pen. You can use something else if you want. I just draw, and it's very exact, very exact, one inch like that. Um, and of course, like my gel pen, that's a little, it's a little thick, but um, again, this is just for the demo. So we're going to take the X-Acto knife and we're going to slice down that line no further than what you have drawn. This is why I suggest to use an X-Acto knife because it's just, well, it's exact. That's the, it's in the name. So I'm gonna press down and just very carefully, tip to tip, go across that line. Now, congratulations, we have a hole in the front of our bag. Ha ha! So, now you're going to take the facing strip, and instead of doing what you would do with like a zipper, and you place it across here, you know, wrong, right sides together, and you, you, you cut around, you, you stitch around, and you flip it the inside, and pray that the corners aren't smudged. You're not gonna do that. Instead, what you're going to do is you're going to very gently shove this <laughs> into the hole that is totally, totally an inch. So let's see, because I might have, I might have made it a little tight, just a little tight. I think I, I think I need to go, need to go long. Hold on. It's good to have mistakes. It's, it's off by like the tiniest, tiniest amount. But the important thing is you do not want to go too far. You just, just a little. So I'm just gonna kinda, I just kinda dotted that. Just poke downward so I didn't go too far. I've, I've done that with seam rippers and it scares the crap out of me. Don't use a seam ripper to do that. Okay, now that we have the correct size hole, we're going to take the facing right side to right side of your exterior fabric and shove it into the hole. 
such that on the wrong side of the fabric, so if we flip the exterior piece over, we only have about a quarter of an inch dangling and pointing uh, a d downward. So this is going to be the top where the D-ring is going to be facing up, and this is the bottom, so heading towards the base of the bag or the side if you do a, like a horizontal one. Um, and then the longer piece is going to be sitting up this way, pointing up toward the top of the bag. So if you were to imagine, this will eventually be the strap connector. That's the orientation that you want. At the sewing machine, we're going to stitch right along that cut line. Um, it might be a little difficult to see, um, but I'm going to be using black thread, so hopefully you'll be able to kind of get an idea from that. But uh, we stitch inside, do not go over. I know sometimes, you know, especially domestic machines, they just kind of go wee off to the edge. You gotta stay within uh, your, uh, your facing fabric, otherwise it's not gonna flip to the other side correctly. So let's go ahead and head to the machine. So now that we're at the machine, we're gonna go ahead and try to get as close as we can to where we wanna start. And if it helps at all, you can actually take a pen and just mark uh, where you wanna go. Um, my machine, it's really easy to see where it is I need to go, but I tend to just kinda of pull the wheel and set, it, set the needle right down next to that cut line and get this lined up myself um, before I, I actually start doing stitching. So I'll go ahead and I'll put my needle in about halfway. And now I can put my presser foot down and we're going to just stitch all the way to the end. Now, it, now if I were to go one more, then what would happen is I would end up stitching over or risk stitching over. This is where I like to just hand crank it just to make sure I don't goof up. But that's because I, I, I'm using a double feed machine and it makes it very hard um, to, uh, to kind of get like an exact placement. Um, so that's why I do that. You may not have to do that on a domestic. Now, when you get to the end, I don't mind backstitching. So I backstitch once and come back forward once, and then I'm done. And that's basically what you have is you've just done the small line of stitching right there along that edge. And that's going to be the facing for the top part. So you're, now you're probably wondering, well, what do we do about this bottom edge? It's raw as well. Let's go back to the table and I'll explain it. Woohoo! Okay, now that we're back at the cutting table and we're done sewing this little portion, which is our facing for the top half, we're going to flip it to the other side. And you do that by just gently rolling over the facing and pushing it into the hole. And then I'll flip it over and you can see I'm going to just pull whoop, on the wrong thing. I'm going to pull, pull it through to the other side, just like that. And just so that we know that it's out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to fold it up so that we can still see the bottom line there and we don't actually like stitch it shut. I'm going to put a clip in it up at the top. Oh boy, everybody, let's have fun. Okay, I'm weird. Um, so now what we can do is we can face the bottom. So we're gonna take our strap connector, we're gonna take this little bit here and we know about where our interfacing is going to be. Um, I probably should interface the whole thing, you know, in retrospect, so I wouldn't have to worry about this. So we'll just bear that in mind going forward. Um, so that said, what we're gonna do is the opposite of what we had done for the top half. So we're gonna take it right sides together, meaning the side of your strap connector that doesn't have a seam line, and we're going to Gently insert it into the hole, like that. And then on the other side, you know, same deal, uh, quarter inch or so. If you go over, it's okay. It's not gonna be the end of the world, right? You just wanna make sure that you have a little bit of it on the other side so it can grip to it. And then 
just like we did before, we are going to stitch right next to the cut line right here. So basically what this is going to do is uh, effectively uh, close that up so that that edge is no longer raw. So let's go do that. So you can get a better look at what I did because I know that that other view can be a little far away. Um, we've got the seam line right here where we put the raw edges together on the other side of the strap connector and I pushed it through to the other side. Just the complete opposite of what we did with this little piece here. And the reason this piece is pinned up is because if I, if I pull it down and it ends up getting stitched here when we do this stitch, you won't be able to take the remaining piece of the connector and push it through. So that's why it's out of the way. You just like, go away, Becky, that's your home. So we're going to stitch right along this line again just as we did before, this time with much more gusto. And I'm going to hand crank myself into position so that I do this correctly. And of course, stay within your strap connector um, so that you don't uh, stitch further out and basically put holes in your bag and then have, you have to rip open the hole. Uh, dogs and cats living together, absolute chaos. And I'm actually gonna pull my stitch length down because I had a little too high last time. And we're gonna stitch all the way to the end. And I'm, before I let that needle fall, I'm just gonna double check and we're good. We're good. Woo. Just like that. Okay. I'm gonna clip this. Get my seams somewhat cleaned up. God, I love black thread on light fabric. <laughs> wow! <Wah>! Okay. <laughs> All right, now we're going to take the D-ring and we're going to place it in. And I try to go pretty snug because the thing is you don't want, um, you don't want this like hanging out. I'll show you in a, in a second what I mean by that. Take the clip off that's holding the little tongue uh, that's left over. And we're just gonna wiggle this in. It's a little bit of a tight fit right now, but you're just gonna wiggle it through to the other side and you can pull on it. And what you wanna do is you wanna pull and adjust, but don't pull too hard or you just start ripping things. You know, I mean, vinyl's pretty good, but it's not, not foolproof. So, we pull to tighten it to get the good fit in there. And then you can lay down that little extra bit there. This is a lot of extra. I'll show you what to do in just a minute because this is how you want it to look. It is completely flush. It is, it is nice. It can still move, but it's not going to do this whole like in the straps drop. So honestly, if you have a shoulder bag, the straps may stay up and that would be pretty cool. Um, Actually, wait, let me think about that. Scratch that, reverse it. Um, anyway, uh, you don't need to top stitch or anything, which is awesome. And again, you don't see anything going on upstairs here either. Um, it covers up everything really nicely, especially if you don't use black thread like me. I use, I use black thread, so I got a little bit uh, you know, going on there. So the thing that I like to do um, and if you want, if, if, if you prefer it, you can stitch, but I think it removes the whole allure of having this look. Um, but I just put a rivet in. So I just, I just figure out where I want, a, you can do one, you can do two. Um, I just, uh, you know, I put, put a you know, little dot right there. You don't want it too close um, to the seam because it'll kind of pull down uh, on the seam, for those of you who do machine embroidery, it's like pull compensation. It'll just start to pull everything to the center, and that's not ideal. So let me get my hole punch thing, which I love. I just use this hole punch uh, straight up from Amazon. It, grr, it's awesome. I feel so heavy metal. And uh, of course, like if you're in a, a big, I should say this, if you are in like a bag and it's like way out here, um, then that might be a pain in the butt to use one of these, um, but you can use like a mallet, uh, like a rubber mallet and all that, but I'm just 
this is just demo fabric. And I would assume at this point, y'all know how to put rivets in. If not, I have a video for that. All right, and I'm just gonna cut that hole. Ha ha, looks so good. Look at that hole, guys. So good, so good. Okay, take one of my rivets. Lord knows I got enough of these. That's a happy little rivet. And put that in like that. Ugh. Giant press. And oh, I forgot the long stem I put that way. And stick that in and press. Wah. Gotta love it. Okay, so now that we've got that going for us, that's basically what it looks like. But now you got like all this extra bulk down here. You don't need to leave it. Um, you can cut all of this off. I just suggest doing it after you do whatever finishing technique that you want for, uh, for the strap to kind of keep this down here um, because you just don't know what you're gonna catch or not catch. Um, and I, I get super nervous about that. So I'm just gonna go in here now and trim that down just like that, you got extra scraps, guys, look. And that is your hidden connector, so hot. I think she's settled now. <laughs> I really like to do videos with my cat who's discovered that I'm in the middle of recording and is like, I need to snuggle now, like meow. Anyway, I hope that this video helped you. I hope that you are able to make glorious bags with hidden strap connectors now that you know how to do it. Feel free to like, subscribe, leave comments below, and happy holidays.